At this point, we're going to drape a bunch of fabric over this poor Tuscan here. Just needs to be roughly sand colored. This is just a base coat. It's like the primer, if you will. It'll save you on wraps in the long run. A little bit of a snip, shove the spike through. Is that about where I want it? That's about where I want it. Come on. Starting to look like a Tuscan. This is what we attached the actual wraps to. This really is just to get the base head shape and uh, an idea of what everything's gonna kind of look like. If you got folds, it'll work to your advantage in the long run. And if you make mistakes, this is getting covered with the uh, wraps anyway. So you don't even have to worry about being exact. Hell, you don't even have to really worry about being close. So right here, I'm just going for a rough head shape. So since we're draping weird, since we've got this weird drape that our already wants to take, I'm just gonna accent that a little bit. Fold that under. I keep a flap in the back so this is probably gonna get folded under. When I put buckets on, they have a flap to put them on, a couple pieces of Velcro, and the opening is completely hidden. So right now we're just going for rough head shape. Slightly round. We're gonna bring all this in when we uh, glue on the wraps. This one here is a little lighter than I normally like. Even for my base coat, I tend to prefer something a little darker. Again, I haven't left my house in oh, a month now. We use what we got. I'm sure we're all in that situation though, right? Unless you're viewing this way in the future. In which case, I absolutely welcome our robotic overlords. Now I'm just looking to see where it's draping already, and I can see this wants to go forward, so we just help it along a little bit. And this also wants to go forward, so I'm gonna help it along a little bit. There we go. You now it looks like a sleepy time, Tuscan. Not perfect, it's definitely a good start. I believe we are almost ready for wraps. That looks good. For those wondering, it's a tripod with a styrofoam head stuck on the end. I found working at headlight or uh, yeah, this height. There you go. Makes things a little easier. This. Is a Menards drop cloth. It's been washed, it's been dried, and it has one bottle of tan. Rit tan. We're just gonna tear it into manageable chunks. The weave got weird on me there. I'm going for about a two to three foot length. Snip, grab and pull. We want inch and a half, two inch strips. It's easy to get the, the level of wear you want. Really that simple. Tuscan uh, 
wraps, not difficult to do. So we're just gonna make a couple of cuts and we're just gonna tear them right there. Already starting to look like a Tuscan. You do want strips of varying width, that's a bit too big. We'll use that as a base layer. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but my neighbors seem to be having a good time. Tear a bunch of strips. We can cut and tear as needed. Some people for, prefer to uh, cut these into strips and then dye them. It works, there's nothing wrong with that. If you do it that way, your edges get more, more character. So these have a little more dye on the edge than the centers. We can do that with weathering. I find it's easier to do it this way. Not better, just easier. A little more out of that. This end is where it was seamed over. I don't want that. Bunch of wraps. glue I use. You can use hot glue. Hot glue works absolutely well. I prefer fabric fusion. I don't know why. I just like using it. My absolute preferred was the uh, crafter's pick. Can't find this anywhere anymore. It is what it is. Now I got to make some decisions. Where do we want our wraps to be? We definitely want them around the eye. So since I have no uh, fabric here, this part's probably going to be done with hot glue. And of course, that's not plugged in. I won't need it. We're done with that. You can come back to that one. Let's go to the back. We want a flap on the back because that's where our uh, opening is going to be. You know what I did forget? Pins. Forgot pins. I'll be right back. There we go. Pins. Hot glue is probably set up, so let's start in the front. I prefer to start in the front and work my way back whenever possible, just because it's usually how we're seen. I think I want a little triangle. This is all about building up texture and not letting the build get the better of you. A lot of people harp on CRLs and approvability. I don't. I think I need a counterweight. I'm a big fan of reference. The more reference you have and the more research you've done, the easier all of this is going to be to make it look the way that you want it to. The process itself is just going to be annoying no matter what. The mannequin head I have is just a hair too small, because why wouldn't he be? And as such, Bucket doesn't want to stay on his head. And you can only tighten it so much. Let's see what we can do about that. Much better. So, a little glue down. Glue also stops the uh, weathering process, which is quite useful because you know you don't want your Tuscan to fray to nothing. Kim likes hot glue. Hot glue works really, really well. There's no dry time in hot glue. But I feel this is just a little more of a permanent solution. This is where reference would come in super useful. 
the more pictures you have up of what a Tuscan looks like from the movies, the, the better your Tuscan's gonna be. Don't go off of what the CRL says. Don't go off of what, you know, you think a Tuscan looks like. I, I've seen the movie, I remember. No, you don't. Get reference, get pictures. Watch the movie again. Gonna need a little bit of hot glue. We got a bunch of them going that way. Let's throw a couple this way. That's too big. There we go. That's the layering I'm looking for. Just take your time. This is where you get to be Tuscan Builder. But the biggest mistake I've ever seen people make with Tuscans is they make them too neat and orderly. So I could easily just keep, you know, alternating. I don't think it would look right just for the sheer fact that everything would be neat and orderly. And you want to go for a little bit of chaos. I've never looked at a Tuscan and went, oh, that Tuscan has too many wraps. And I am just working at just the top of the head at this point. I'm gonna worry about all of this later. So I've got a bunch of stripes here. I don't like that, we're gonna break that up. I have an end, I don't have any ends yet. That looks kinda of goofy, we'll put the end up. So now I'm gonna have wraps that come this way that's gonna break up this line. I'm not terribly worried about it. A little bit of glue. This is actually the part of making a Tuscan I enjoy the most. I love wraps. That's not true. My favorite part's bandoliers. I love making bandoliers. Wraps are probably my second. Is not too bad. He's getting there. So let's bring some pieces to the front because I've got a gap here I want to cover. Right there. A little dangly bit. Hmm. Or I could bring it even more. Over there. Ah, I like that. All right. We'll let that hang for now. That's all there is to it. Just keep wrapping. Yo. I'd say he's starting to look like a Tuscan. I'm pretty happy with him. He's getting there. He's getting there. Get the other side now. Again, we got a weird gap here. I think I want this one on top. I might want this one on top too. Could just do that and then bury that in here. Yeah. It'll give me some more to work with in the back too. Keep in mind, you're going to go through a lot of glue, so be prepared. Have a couple tubes of this stuff. See that flaps that stick up? Glue them down. All right. Most of them are going this way. I 
I think it's fine. on the back. Because we can't leave the back for last. We have to be prepared for it because right here we're going to need a strip. Probably use this big one. Just as a flap. see it easier from the inside. I have gotten a Tuscan done, put it on and stabbed myself in the head because I forgot to pull out a pin. You don't make that mistake three times. Another piece and just over. Any day now. Stupid non Newtonian liquids. Alright. Keeping these two pieces separate. This is the important part because that's where we stick our head in. We just wrap everything up to it. Start bringing one or two from the front, back, like yeah. I might even pull you up and do it that way. My kingdom for an extension cord, huh? This is how you get most of your shape. Notice my hand is underneath, holding everything where I want it to be. Be a costume maker, they said. It'd be fun and glamorous, they said. Mm -hmm. Can I get a blank spot right here. I think it's going to be a perfect spot to start a wrap from. Tuck the whole thing in maybe. So since my flap is here, I can go all the way across from here. I know here's and here's. Can't quite see what a here is, huh? trying to make it not look like a bandana. So I think we're going to stop it right here. Okay. 
starting to break it up. I think we're going to bring one this way though, towards the front. Looks like I might need to tear out a few more pieces of wrap here. I think I need a tangent going this way. Oh yeah. Out of wraps. A couple thinner ones now. There's no, there's no exact to how to do this, by the way. This is all just art. Speculation. Speculation, that's not the word I'm looking for. It's all subjective. over this one because I don't like these two being parallel. I think if I stuck a wrap here going this way. I'm getting kind of a box weave pattern going though. Gotta be careful about that. Give that a bit to dry. Let's see what we got in the front now. I like this side. This side's pretty good. Once I fold that down a little more, I think. That helped too. Now, these are all gonna be, once the glue is fully dry, I'm gonna come back by and just hit everything. Every exposed corner, every edge that's popped up. I think I'm happy with him so far. We still have to do this side and the chin because we need down here as well. I'll have to go over that. So many decisions.
I think we're gonna stop for a bit and let it dry. Just walk away, let it do its thing. We'll come back after lunch. It's had some time to dry. Pretty okay now. We're gonna take two of these bigger ones and glue them along the leather here coming out. We gotta make kind of a kind of a jaw. Might even take them off for this one. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all along this part here, we're gonna glue in a couple of big pieces. Here's a bumblebee in my garage. Poor guy. So I'm gonna glue these strips along the leather here. There's no easy way for me to show you how I'm doing this. Make sure I get everything ready. I'm gonna have a little bit of time before that glue is done. Then we got another large one. Do the exact same thing on the other side. This one I could probably just glue, glue, fabric glue. Now I want at least one wrap around here to give it kind of a jaw. So I'm gonna bring one of these down and around and I'm probably, I might be able to do that with a couple of them. So, now those are on. Put them back on his head, get back to work. So I think if I bring this guy around and this guy around, That'll give me the jawline I'm looking for. I like that. It's not too shabby. After this, you don't want it too terribly tight. It's got to fit you. You don't want it to strangle you either. Believe it or not, the wraps are almost done. All right. All right, let's finish this guy up. Just Doing the last bits here. I'm going to bring a couple around from the back to the front. This guy, we'll cross him over here. Eh. Let's bring him underneath. All right. I'll glue that down to. Uh, I don't like this big swatch going all the way across. So I think I'm going to tuck one in here coming down with a smaller one. That's all this is. Finding a spot you don't like and fixing it. Sooner or later, you run out of spots. Maybe on to bottle number two. This is the part in the operation where I start using lots of pins. 
all the subtle little stuff. So I think I want to finish this side first. And we're just going to finish, finish it. Yeah, as opposed to partially finish it. No, we're just going to finish it. It's also time. Open anything in blue. I'm telling you, a couple of these things, super useful to have. Don't get just one bottle. Like with everything else, a lot of this is going to get cut off and trimmed once it's uh, all said and done. One of uh, the Midwest Garrison's GMLs used to make full shoulders. I mean, they were gorgeous. Not overtly accurate, but they looked fantastic. I just need a little bit in here, and uh, I think we're good. I think I want just a couple pieces straight across. Yeah, that'll work perfect. This is the part where you can make the Tuscan all your own. That'll work. not bad. It's probably about exactly where I want it. We'll trim a bunch of this off. The neck does get partially wrapped. I want everything else to meet up with this piece here. Now we have my flap in the back. I think I've got a spot here. The fabric goes over. I think I want to tuck a piece in there and pull it back. Just to break up this neck scarf. Ooh, I think I like that. And I'll also make this piece lay much flatter. Don't lose your pins. 
I've got a lot going this way. I think I want to probably tuck a piece in. Oh, that's pretty tight, isn't it? Let's see what we got. Again, a couple of small ones. I think we get this one. Just give me a little bit of difference in contrast. Not bad to get in there. I could just put a, a full piece right here and be done with it. And I might, I don't know yet. I suppose that's not terrible. Seems like the last few wraps of every Tuscan always consists of, all right now, how do I fill this space? Quick, shove a wrap in. Suppose that'll work. believe with that the wraps and this guy are done you need to dry but he for all intents and purposes is done should bring another down here all right we're gonna put one more Now we're done, as soon as I pull that over. You're never done. It's never really done. There we go. Looks super long, because it is. So give it a little bit, we're gonna give it at least, I personally like to give it a day, maybe two. Let all the glue set up, and we're gonna come in with a little bit of brown writ dye, hit the edges just a little bit. It's gonna add enough contrast. It's gonna make everything pop a bit more. I might stuff some glue in there real quick. All right, wraps are done. I'm gonna go, he's done. He said, we're gonna trim off bits, pull here and there to, to make the fringe, but I wanna let him set for a bit. So, flap here. Ain't it? Which I'm gonna have to glue down. And then there's a flap here. I'll probably end up putting a piece of sticky back Velcro here and here, just to keep that closed. We'll see. This could use just a little bit of glue. Like I said, you're never really done. So once all this is completely dried, I will come back and hit almost every single edge with some of this glue. But 
you got to let it dry. You got to let it do its thing. It has to be done before you do that because you can pick it up and move it around and see what actually needs and what doesn't. So at this point, I think we're okay to cut some stuff. A little bit of trim work. We got some long ends here that need to be taken care of. You don't really want stragglers. You want it to look like there are stragglers or long drapey bits, but you don't actually want long drapey bits. Try not to cut your straight ends. That's very bad for your scissors. The Tuscans do have a neck wrap, so this doesn't have to be perfect. Heck, it doesn't even really have to be that clean, or lack of clean, I should say. Because I'm absolutely trying to fringe and fray all of this. It's much more neck like. I like that. Let's do some weathering. New day. New uh new Tuscan. It looks pretty good. I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's touch and go for a little bit there, but it's alright now. These are acrylic paints. These are acrylic because they water down pretty easy. Technique I'm not fantastic at. I'm trying real hard to uh, make this as difficult on myself as possible, but as easy for everyone else as possible. Because there's a lot of YouTubers out there who are like, well, this is super simple, and it looks super simple until you try it. I'm not a big fan of that. Pretty good. That's about that color. Come on. About that color. Very wet. The wetter you can make this, the easier it's going to work. We're just going to brush along the edge here. So we're just lightly, lightly coloring in the, uh, the edges. You can do this with an airbrush. You can do this with paint. Do this with dye. Lots and lots of ways to weather things. It's not bad. Now I'm trying to stick on. It's hard to explain. This has got two layers, right? This has got this one and the one underneath it. And I'm trying to stick to the topmost layer. Just lightly brushing across it. Maybe putting a little more in the corners wherever uh, two wraps meet up. Even just that makes a huge difference, right? We're just trying to do that on the whole thing. Think about the nature of the character. I'm trying to overdo it, but you definitely want to be able to uh, make it look lived in. I guess a secret to this, if I were to give any form of secret, is to do a lot of very light layers. Remember, the only thing that separates you from professionals, time. They've done it a little more than you have. That's it. So give yourself the time.
Been at this, what, just a couple of minutes? Look at that huge difference. Lots of light papers. So I'm starting out with the brown here, just straight brown. Very edges. Then I'm gonna come in with the sandy color and uh, blend it out a bit. I'm not using end all be all the best paints in the world. Just simple craft paint. Garbage brush. You don't need the ultimate equipment to make any of this stuff happen. You don't have to have the world's best workshop. I just have a little table in my garage. Just think about where dirt would get trapped and then put dirt in there. I started out absolutely hating this guy, right? I mean, the metal pieces, or the face pieces were fine, but I was very unhappy with everything else. Now, he's absolutely one of my favorites. Always give yourself till the end of a project before you uh, pass him off as unusable or anything like that. It's amazing how, it's like the stages of grief, but with costuming. Stages of costuming, I guess. Try not to use enamel paint because you don't want it to be shiny. You'd rather be way. F you want it to be flat. Keep in mind, I'm being way more aggressive than I need to be, but yeah. And it will also probably destroy this brush in the process. This is not riveting content. I need to stop doing that. Every time I make some weird random offhand comment, I have to stop the speed up so it doesn't sound like a chipmunk. Or if I just kept my mouth shut. The nice thing about Tuscans, they are never dirty enough. No matter how bad you get, I mean, I'm sure there's a point where you're like, wow, I got needed to stop three brushes ago. But for the most part, you never look at a Tuscan and go, huh, he's way too dirty. There'll be a point where you're like, oh, I uh, think I may be done. I may have overdone it. No, nope.
And this guy also gets a neck wrap, so I don't have to be you know, too pristine or too too attention detailed for the bottom, because it's gonna be covered anyway. But it's just a light neck wrap, because I'm going for a, a new hope here. Attack of the Clones uses a, a, a much thicker neck wrap. Lots of little, little details that are different with the Attack of the Clone ones. Hand wrap placements, lack of a neck breather. The bucket is slightly different, but not really. One more, and I think we might be done with the brown. I'll get a little bit around the snap too. I think it blend in a bit better. Just like that, completely changes how he looks, right? Now we go on to the tan, which is just gonna be a mid-range weathering. This I'm gonna, this will golden them up a little bit. I'm okay with that. Just using this as a blender. Which makes the base color here, the highlight color, not too shabby. I'm gonna dig in this guy now. Look at that. That's not too bad. Kinda dig that. So this is going to add a lot of texture to this guy. Texture is the most important part of a character, which makes it believable or not. It's the difference between a nice costume and a real costume, you know? And that's just water that I'm dipping in here. So if you get to a point where you're like, I, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I, I did something wrong. If you're going for 501st submittal, ask your local GMO. If you're just making it because you like Tuskins, watch the movie. Look at your reference. Ask someone you trust. I'm being very haphazard with this. There's, there's no, no rhyme or reason. I'm just hitting the edges again. I don't know. Anywhere that looks clean. Also keep in mind paint dries lighter. If you're sitting here going, oh my god, he's too dark. Give it time. Might not be. And even if they are, keep in mind, Tuskins are never dirty enough. Almost there. the point where I sit and wonder, what's in focus, you think? Probably that box right there, or the table. Is it what I'm working on? No. Why would that be in focus? 
a little more on the neck and I think we might be done. Weathering's never done. You're constantly adding more and adding more and adding more. But for now, this Tuscan is done. As soon as I clip this right here. So the last thing I'm gonna do to him is I'm gonna come along with this glue and I'm gonna pull up every seam, every spot that's open and glue the whole thing down. Since the bulk of it's taken care of now, it should only take a couple of minutes. There he is. It's not too shabby. I'm pretty happy with him. He turned out really well. I would normally do like seven or eight more layers. It takes time. For the sake of the video and getting this out, I wanted to uh, just stop there. It's absolutely approvable. He's uh, I don't know, he's grown on me. I didn't like him at first. No, no, I kind of do. I like him a lot. He's a really well done Tuscan. I'm really happy with it. So let's talk face pieces for a minute. I use resin face pieces. I cast resin face pieces. I 3D printed them, I sanded them, I made a mold, and I make my own pieces. Wouldn't necessarily recommend that for everyone because it's a relatively expensive process altogether, but whenever I'm doing a project and I have extra resin, pour it into one of these. I get a nose or an eye or blood spitter. Another thing about the blood spitters, if you look there's a slight taper here. It's hard to find. If you uh, get a kit online and I'd recommend going to a, a crate clan, K-R-A-Y-T-C-L-A-N. Um, that's probably your best bet to find them. Uh, you can get whole kits like this online. There's four or five different kits that, that just... The process of putting this together is going to be the same no matter what kit you get. This guy gave me a lot of trouble. I made mistakes, I had problems, and I'm leaving every single one of them in there. More times than not, when you watch a YouTube video, you hear uh, that the, they do the whole thing. Speaking of problems... They do the whole thing and everything looks perfect and there's no issues and nothing goes wrong. And then, you know, normal people try it. When normal people do costumes, it's fueled 90% by profanity. Things go wrong. Things always go wrong. Don't let that stop you. It's a good build. He's not terrible. Like I said, I'm happy with... He would just, just sit there and do the thing. Spend 90... Yeah. Just pull the whole bucket out. I don't care anymore. Come on. Really? He falls off every single time until the minute I want to take it out and now I got nothing. Come on. Alright. It's a good build. I'm happy with it. It's not an expensive build. I always recommend using resin pieces as opposed to metal ones. The metal ones look absolutely beautiful, but they weigh your mask down and throughout the day your bucket just slowly falls down. Or you gotta put extra counterweights on the back to, to balance everything out and then it just becomes a really heavy, uncomfortable bucket. Resin pieces look almost as good. They're light. They're they're fantastic to use. Use resin. It's easier. It's better, arguably. It's definitely an achievable process. Take it one step at a time. Try and have fun with your build. It's not too terrible, but I think you can do it.